Greetings students and welcome back to another lesson on differential geometry. In this video, I'm going to introduce closed curves and periodic curves in the context of differential geometry. There's some curves that are quite clearly closed. An example is an ellipse. If we start out at the left edge of the ellipse and have a car travel along the ellipse, it will eventually return back to where it started. If, after returning to its starting position, we have the car travel around the ellipse again, it will once again come back to where it started. And this goes on and on and on. It's quite obvious this ellipse is a closed curve. There's no gaps or openings in it, and no matter how many times we traverse the curve, we always end up at our starting point. Contrast that with a curve like this. If we start our car at one end of the curve, the car will not end up at the starting point. It's also obvious from just looking at it that the curve doesn't close in on itself. Therefore, this is not a closed curve, it's an open curve. But what if I were to draw something more ambiguous? Consider a curve like this. If I started my car from the origin and traversed along this loop, then I would end up back at the origin. However, if I continued the car, I would eventually leave the loop, go down this line, and get to a point where I never end back up at the origin again. In addition, if I were to start my car at any point besides the origin, I would never end up back where I started. To make things even more ambiguous, this curve looks like it closes in on itself. But is it a closed curve or an open curve? In order to deal with these more ambiguous cases, we need a proper definition of a closed curve. And this is where periodic functions come in. If gamma is a smooth curve taking a real parameter t and mapping it to some coordinate in Rn, then gamma of t is said to be t periodic if for all real values of the input parameter t, gamma of t plus capital T is equal to gamma of t, where capital T is some real constant. Given this definition, every smooth curve gamma is zero periodic because gamma of t plus zero is obviously equal to gamma of t. It's the same point. Of course, since gamma must be a smooth curve for this definition to apply, we can't have any funny discontinuities that might result in gamma not being zero periodic. Additionally, if gamma were a constant function, then gamma would be capital T periodic for any real value of capital T. To avoid these two degenerate cases, we can construct another definition, that of a closed function. A non-constant gamma of t is a closed function if it is capital T periodic and capital T is not zero. Now this capital T that's used to call a function capital T periodic is kind of like a period of a periodic function. And this brings us to another definition of the period. The period of a closed curve gamma is the smallest positive number capital T such that gamma is capital T periodic. So if a function has a period of capital T, we can also call it 2T periodic. But the period is actually the smallest number tau at which we can call the function tau periodic. So the period would still just be capital T, even though the function can be 2 times capital T, 3 times capital T, 4 times capital T, periodic, etc. The last definition we're going to cover in this video is the definition of self-intersection. A curve gamma has a self-intersection at a point P if there exist parameter values A and B that aren't equal to each other, such that two conditions are satisfied. The first condition is that the value of gamma at A and the value at the parameter value B are the same and equal to this point P. Basically, this means that gamma is the same at two different parameter values. It intersects itself. The second condition is that if gamma happens to be a periodic function, the difference between the parameter values at which the self-intersection occurs cannot be an integer multiple of the period capital T. Let me illustrate what this means. If my gamma happened to be a circle, then it wouldn't have any self-intersections by this definition, because in order for us to reach the same point on the circle, we would have to traverse an integer multiple of the circle's period. By the second condition on the definition, we cannot traverse an integer multiple of a period for a point to be a self-intersection. The self-intersection must occur outside of the curve's periodicity. Therefore, a circle, even though it's periodic, has no self-intersections. In contrast, a figure 8, which I'll draw right over here, has both a self-intersection and is periodic. If we start at the middle and go around this first loop, then we end back up in the middle. But notice that we haven't traversed the full period, we still need to go around the second loop. We've only traversed a fraction of the period, but we end up back at the same point. 
So in this case, traversing a fraction of the full period is enough to have us end back up in the middle. Since we only traverse a fraction of the period and not an integer multiple, we can say that a figure 8 is a periodic function with a self-intersection in the middle. It doesn't have any self-intersections anywhere else. To end back up at the other points, you would have to traverse an integer multiple of the period. If we now go back to that ambiguous curve we drew earlier, we can see that while it isn't closed or periodic, it does have a self-intersection at the origin. And the reason it isn't closed is that by this definition of a t-periodic function and by this definition of a closed function, we would have to be able to return to any point that we start at. Here, the only point that we can return to is the origin. But if I started somewhere besides the origin, then even traversing the curve would not return me back to that same point. So this function cannot be closed. Okay, so that's enough of a definition dump. If I add any more definitions, I might end up with some angry comments from people who would much rather see me prove theorems. Quite frankly, I don't blame them. So let's actually do that. Let's prove a theorem. This theorem states that if gamma is a regular closed curve, a unit speed reparametrization of gamma is also always closed. We'll start the proof by supposing that gamma is capital T periodic with a period of capital T. Since gamma is a closed curve, it might presumably look something like this. In such a situation, we can compute the overall length of gamma, which would just be its arc length integral from zero to the period of the magnitude of the derivative of gamma with respect to t. We covered this arc length definition in a previous video on differential geometry. I've linked the playlist in the description. In any case, if we traverse the curve gamma from zero to its period and end up at the starting point, we will have traversed a distance equal to the length of the curve gamma, which I've called L gamma. In addition, by definition of arc length, the arc length we cover when we go from t equals 0 to some generic value t plus the period capital T is given by this following integral. We can then split this integral up into an integral going to capital T plus an integral going further to t plus capital T. As mentioned above, this first integral is just the length of the curve L gamma. For the second integral, we can make a variable substitution by letting v equal u minus capital T, in which case we end up with the following. It should be pretty easy to see that now we've got the definition of the arc length as the other term, so that s of t plus capital T is just L gamma plus s of t. We can shift the s of t to the left to end up with this equation. And if we change the s of t plus capital T to another time, s of t plus m times capital T, where m is some integer, then we can quite easily show that we'll just get an m in front of the L gamma. Because if we traverse an integer multiple of the period of this curve, then in terms of arc length, we would cover an integer multiple of the arc length. Intuitively, that should make sense. And since we end up at the same value of gamma when we go a full length around the curve, we can say that gamma at an arc length value of s of t plus m times capital T is the same as the value of gamma at an arc length of just s of t, since we've only gone around an integer number of times around the curve and we end up back at the exact same point. All this shows us is that when reparametrized with respect to arc length, gamma is still a periodic function since it's the same every time we go around a curve from any starting point, but now with a period equal to L gamma. Now, as I discussed in the previous video, the unit speed reparametrization of gamma can be thought of as a reparametrization with respect to arc length. They're both pretty much equivalent to each other. Because of this, gamma of S, where S is the arc length parameter, is a unit speed curve. And because of what we've concluded with gamma of S also being a periodic function with period L gamma, we can therefore conclude that gamma s, the unit speed reparametrization of gamma, is a closed curve. And that completes the proof. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'll thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. If you enjoyed this lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.